This is what I see uh, on my window simulation. I want to show to you that this is exactly what I will be seeing on the target, on the Raspberry Pi target that we just previously saw. Hey guys, welcome to Embedded Toolbox, the video interview series where we try to save the world by solving one engineering challenge at a time. To help us navigate those waters, we brought on Bruno Grisset, who is the head of uh, UX product management at Electrobit. How are you doing, Bruno? Hi, I'm doing great. Thanks. Hi, Bruno. Hi. So today in the automotive industry, everything's changing. You know, you've got to get more out more quickly. There's way more software, but there's one big hiccup, and that's that especially in the world of UIs, you've got to wait for the tier one or the auto manufacturer to provide you uh, the hardware target for you to get going really, because otherwise you're going to be, I don't know, developing sort of aimlessly, not knowing what the specifications are. What are your thoughts on that? Where are the other challenges that automotive UI developers face? Yeah, today uh, the, the, the automotive UI developers face the fact that uh, they, the, the software and the hardware are still, still coupled to get together into a device. Uh, we see the trends of software and hardware decoupling, but it's still difficult for them to get uh, what they are doing on the UI side into the device and see really, really um, early in the development what is the result on, uh, on, the, on the hardware they will get into the car. This is, this is something that takes ages and they, today it's no longer possible. So they want to really get uh, early the, the results of what they do to really change that, change the directions. Maybe they, they would be deciding and go faster to, to their creation. Very good. So I know that Electrobit has been working a lot in the world of UI as well as automotive software in general. And you've come up with a pretty interesting approach to allow developers to get started sooner and also, which everybody loves, a lot cheaper than the alternative of waiting for the automotive grade platforms to come out for your prototyping. Can you explain what you're doing in EB Guide? Yeah, in EB Guide, you have one, one key component that, that is what we call the, the graphics target framework, EB Guide GTF. It, this is the key piece that is running on the device. It is there to interpret the, the, the UI that you have created, and it, it is the key piece that connects the UI to the middleware that is below. But it's agnostic uh, to, to the OS or to the hardware that is there, so that what you create on top can be uh, the same or uh, whatever the, the device is below. And uh, what you see on what you create on, on your device on your desktop machine with guide is what you get in, uh, on the device itself. So we help in decoupling the UI from the rest of uh, the software stack, and we help uh, the designers and developers to develop the UI very early on their machines directly and see the results right away on Windows before they can get to any any type of uh, devices like Android tablets or or, or today. Raspberry Pis, because this is also something that um, is an issue, especially nowadays. Yeah, uh, it it, get, it takes quite a lot of um, uh, budget to 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 access to automotive grade uh, hardware, and sometimes you don't need that, especially at the early days of, of the development. You want to get fast, but also cheap. You don't have that much budget to validate your your assumptions or your design principles. And the Raspberry Pi is, is sometimes a, a good, a good hardware that can help in reducing the costs, also validating what's going to, going to run on, on the device later on. So you're telling me that you can run uh, or start developing an, an automotive user interface on a $30, $35 embedded target and then port that over to do an actual, you know, more commercial type production environment later on? Of course, the, the, the SOCs and the hardware are, are very, very different. But the, the Raspberry Pi today is really relevant for uh, of the, the, the power and the capabilities that the, the next hardware ca can have. So you find everything you, you need in, in a Raspberry Pi. You have the same capabilities. So at the beginning, you don't need to be exactly uh, the same as what you want to have in, in the hardware. So this little difference can be just uh, removed. Just start with the Raspberry Pi and then just start for those $35 because you don't even have to pay to get EB Guide Studio. It's free of charge and you can directly download it and, and start using it right away. That's fantastic. Well, I know you have a little bit of a demo set up for us and we're going to bring on Catalin Perboy, who's a software developer over there at Electrobit. Hi, Catalin. What do you got for us today? 
Hello, Brian. I'm very excited to show you uh, a very cool demo that I have prepared for you on, uh, on a Raspberry Pi target. On my desk, basically, it's a Raspberry Pi 4 target, uh, as you mentioned, so it's not an automotive target. It's a very uh, cheap and affordable target that every developer can see. Attached to it, I just have, uh, I have a keyboard to let's do a bit of interaction between uh, an HMI and an actual uh, user input, if you want. Uh, can you see the screen? Yeah, it looks pretty slick. Perfect. <laughs> uh, so what you can see uh, on the screen, it's a very, um, a very appealing, if you want, a very slick model that we have developed in, uh, in EBGuy that it's currently running in, uh, in such a target. So basically, it's what you will uh, see in uh, cars, on, uh, new cars on the, um, on the market, on, on the streets today. Um, for this, I prepared some uh, very small interaction with it. So uh, using the keyboard that I currently have in front of me, I will just uh, navigate because obviously be this being a cluster, we cannot, uh, we cannot have touch input in this case. So I will just go ahead and move from, uh, from this views, just a very simple uh, interaction with this. So just for instance, I am changing the height of the suspension just using the, the keyboards. Uh, in this case, uh, that I currently have uh, have at my disposal. In a typical car, I will do this using you know, the uh, commands on the steering wheel and so on and so forth. This is the model that I am currently uh, running on, uh, on this target. Let's say that I am heading with this model into production and I have a requirement that I want to do a change to, uh, to this behavior. I don't know. Let's uh, change one of the center menus. Let's make a change in this, uh, in this model. For this, I will leave the screen sharing from the uh, actual target aside and I will bring forth the wonderful tool that we, that we are talking about. And this is EB Guide. As you can see, this is uh, how EB Guide is looking. I have uh, different tabs in order to make my life easy. It's very clear, very well uh, organized, so every developer um, can interact very well with it. What I have here is basically uh, a model. It's the same model that we saw on the screen. Uh, of the Raspberry Pi, and I can very, uh, very quick show it to you. So as Bruno said, this is what you see is what you get approach that we uh, at EBGA, at, uh, at Electrobit uh, are, uh, are aiming for. In this case, I will want to do a very simple change that will not imply any additional compilation, any, um, any coding like we are uh, used to in, uh, in other, in other tools. In this case, uh, I have everything here. I have everything here in this, uh, in this tool. I know not only have the behavior, not, not only have the visual aspects, I have also the behavior. As you can see here, we have a state machine which is responsible for driving the behavior. And this is how we represent different screens that we see in, uh, in an HMI model developed by EBGuide. In this case, I have the, uh, the sequence that we saw previously on, uh, on the Raspberry Pi target. And I will, let's say, want as a developer to intervene in this, uh, in this chain. For this, I can e either change uh, one view or uh, start from a, from, a, from a different view uh, in order to build up different behaviors. In this case, I will just use uh, this, uh, this view to start from, and I can just go ahead and copy it and make, let's say, a very small change in, the, uh, in its content. I will, for instance, give it a name. I will call it custom view. And inside, uh, as you can see, we have a very tree-like approach here. So I can navigate between each view element at a time. I can change different properties. I can very simply interact with the, uh, with the, the elements that are composing my EBGuide model. In this case, I will just go ahead and load, let's say, one resource that I currently have uh, available in this model, which in this case, very conveniently, is an EBGuide logo. I will make sure to align it exactly on the center of the screen. 
And just like so, very easily, I have created another view for, uh, for my system. I have the view created. All I have to do is introduce it to the state machine, introduce it to the chain so that I can react on. As I showed it to you, it was uh, responding, for instance, in such a matter when I press the right key or the left key, it switched between the views. So very easily with the help of a mouse, I can drag and drop such, uh, such arrows. We call them transitions in EB guide language. So in this case, I can just go ahead and attach or introduce this, uh, this view to this, uh, to this chain here. So for instance, when I press the left key, I want to go to the center main view of the, of the transitions. And in this case, when I press the right key, I want to have the possibility of navigating to the next stage. Very easily, I can just check my behavior, see if it's the one that I'm aiming for. And once I press, for instance, the right key on my keyboard, I have successfully transitioned to a different view. This is what I see uh, on my window simulation. I want to show to you that this is exactly what I will be seeing on the target, on the Raspberry Pi target that we just previously saw. So with this, I will just make sure to export, if you want, this model into uh, a format that the framework or the GTF, uh, as Bruno mentioned it, is capable of understanding. So I will just go ahead and click this export button here, which will automatically translate the model that I just, uh, that I just created into, uh, uh, into GTF format. In this case, all I have to do is go to the target uh, I exported it on a USB on a USB drive. In this case, having the model exported, I just have to provide it by the GTF. For the Raspberry Pi, the GTF is available on our website to download. You can get it and you can install it. It's installing next to your EV guide. In this case, I have the framework that is capable of running the model that I just created on uh, on a 64 Windows. But also, I have the possibility of executing this model on, uh, on the Raspbian uh, operating system. So I can just go ahead and copy and paste this on the USB flash drive because I wanted to have it, uh, to have it available on the target that I will be using. I will close this aside, close the window, and I will make sure to you do the screen sharing on the Raspberry Pi, or I will just open the screen sharing. I will close the previous version of the model that I will be not using because and right now I have created a, new, a newer version. I will unplug the USB flash drive from my PC and I will connect it to the actual Raspberry Pi target that I have available on my, uh, on my desk at a moment. I will copy everything very conveniently on the desktop because I just, I just want to have it available. So as you can see, it's just copy and paste. And of course, I will just open the terminal. I will load the library path so that the, the GPF can be, can be loaded by the Raspberry operating system. I will give it admin rights and I can just deploy it using the startup that we have, uh, that we have provided amongst the GPF. And in this case, one, I press the right key on my, uh, uh, on my keyboard. I can just navigate very simple and very quick to, um, to the view that I just created. I can see it. That is, for instance, uh, what uh, a software designer has been created. And I can move, all, uh, move to a different change or do it. But everything is simple with just two points, two clicks, two seconds. One of the most important things that we mentioned today is that um, you can download EB Guide if you're a user and you can download a version of it free of charge. Where, where would somebody go to do that? So uh, you just have to log on to www.electrobit.com slash EB Guide and immediately you uh, are located in the right place. In this case, you can uh, download uh, EB Guide from... Uh, from the from the menu here, we have a download section where you can acquire uh, you can acquire EB Guide. Uh, 
Uh, so with this, not only that you have access to the, the latest versions of DB Guide and you get the, uh, all the updates that, uh, that we have published, you also get the Windows port, you get the Raspberry Pi, and also you have support for running your models on uh, Android targets. Other than this, you get access to training. And uh, by the way, the model that you saw, uh, that you saw, also running on the, the Windows simulation and on the Raspberry Pi, you can get it also from here using our example uh, example scenarios here. So you can just very well have your, uh, let's say your first introduction to a real life project available on our website to download and to see for yourself. 